Hey, hey guys, welcome to another edition of Raw and Real with TJ and Jim. And uh, as many as you know, we took last week off thanks to your post. We had a lot going on. Um, we did. There was personal stuff. I don't want to really get into all the details because it's irrelevant, but I mean, we had a lot of personal stuff going on. And so it just, it was hard trying to juggle everything, I think, with the way things were. Yeah. Um, you were out of town, I was here, then we were together, and it was just. It was a lot trying to get everything, and I know we, we were going to try to film that Friday to air that Monday, but it just didn't work out. And No, it didn't. Um, most of us are still kind of sort of getting over the whatever we've had. I don't really know. You're still dealing with it quite a bit. And it is. So. I don't know what this is, but it needs to go away. <laughs> For good. The wind's not helping, though. I don't no. know anybody, so... Weather's been crazy around here for sure, for Probably even for Texas. Bite the bullet and go get a steroid shot, but maybe I will this week. <laughs> I always told her for a nurse, she makes the worst patient, but irregardless. Well, you feel like an idiot because, like, you don't feel well. There were a few days that I felt like death, but. You don't feel sick enough to do anything, so you're like, oh, I'll just let it run its course, and it's still running its course. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's coming back with a vengeance, though, so. It never had stopped since Christmas, you've no. been dealing with it, so we're going to have to get something done. But anyway, nevertheless, that's <laughs> kind of the reason for the week off and the way everything's been, and it's been crazy, and... Anyway, you know, we, we wanted a different life and we got it. I mean, we're not running the <laughs> normal run-of-the-mill working secular job things. And we wanted to run our own path and that's what we're doing. And I'm not grappling about it. I'm just saying, like, it's 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 different. Not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> no, it's not. It takes sacrifice. <laughs> but anyway, we're going <clears> to <throat> get into this, this episode. And, and it was really one that... We hadn't planned on. We had some other stuff we were going to go into, and we got to talking this morning, and you had a lot of good points, and I was like, well, we need to get into that, because if it's benefiting us and it's helping us, there's probably others out there, too, that are that are going through it, and, and maybe you are, maybe you're not, and, and maybe if this is you, then maybe hopefully you'll get something out of it and um, expand, you know, grow in, in God, and, and that's... That's the reason we wanted to start doing these anyway and, you know, to always, you know, address the topics that that aren't fun to talk about, that are probably, most people hide them because they don't want others to know, but yeah. our life's an open book, so here we go. I mean, y'all y'all know about um, my past. I've, most of you have been on here and seen my, my testimony. I know that by the numbers, it's, it's continuing to rise on that video, and so I know my testimony's out, so you know my case and my struggle, and so, you know... That was a kind of the way it was, was brought up today was uh, entitled, you know, the cross wasn't enough. And it, it was something kind of something that you had read and it sparked a whole new line of thoughts and thinking. And we got to discussing that today yeah. and some of the stuff that we're, you know, dealing with on a personal level, going through, trying to overcome and uh, continue to grow and achieve and expand. And, and you know, basically it's. The same as saying that, um, you know, by hanging on to our past or dwelling on our past, it's affecting our growth and our future and everything else. Well, we get asked all the time, like, how do you live the life of a Christian while also struggling with your past? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, too, a lot of people mean that because they were Christians when they were kids. And mm. so they've been a Christian their whole life. Like me. Yeah. But I mean, I was baptized at eight, accepted the Lord in my life as eight, yeah. but then later on fell off the wagon and ran my own path. So, but, you know, they're struggling with their sins that they've caused or created. And, mm -hmm. you know, any choice you make has a ramification. Right. I mean, every choice has a consequence. And I feel like sometimes we're so busy dealing with those consequences that we forget who we are in Him. Right. And those consequences lead to more consequences because you just get so overwhelmed. I and mean, I think that's why drinking was such an issue because 
every time your past gets brought up or thrown in your face or somebody has something to say about it or something doesn't work out because of it, it's just being, you're just being hit with it over and over and over. So you yeah. don't feel like you're fully forgiven. You're still having to deal with it. And like, we dealt with the consequences. We dealt with probation. We dealt with courts. We dealt with, you know, we did all that. Mm -hmm. And so now we should be over it and live in life. And you're still being slapped upside the face with it. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, you know, and I've had people a lot of times tell me, and including you and some dear close friends, like, you have to stop letting this affect you. And it's not that we're, we're trying. It's not that we're doing it on purpose or trying to uh, walk that out. But I mean, like, for example, you, you go to get a job and, and you're just like, maybe that's like it was in my case. I mean, years behind me. I mean, I was 15 years out of probation, like off paper. Right. Um. And you go to get a job, and it's like they, they pull up your record, and it's like, you know, we, we won't hire you because of this. And, and so you can't really do anything about it. You can't grow. You can't expand. You can't try to go get a good-paying job. All, you've, all you're looking at is, like, you know, lower-paying jobs. And um, you're not trying to, but it keeps getting brought up, you know. And, and it's even affected a lot of our work in the church because um, one time in particular— and this has happened more than once, but one time in particular, you know, we would try to be open and honest about everything. And so we felt like we owed it to the pastor so that he wasn't blindsided with it. It was out of respect. And we would kind of go and sit down. And this particular case, I actually had a private, you know, lunch with this particular pastor. And um just so he didn't get slapped in the face or, or blindsided by it, you know what I mean? And and um, it was like the first initial response was like, well, you can't do anything within the church. Like, you can't help out with the youth and you can't do this and you can't do that. I, I never asked for that. You know what I mean? I, I was just trying to... That moment, we were just trying to get back into church. Just plug in somewhere and, 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 and start to... Be fed. Yeah, basically, you know, and, and so it continuously comes up and you don't mean for it to and you don't but after so many times you get to the point where uh you know you're just you're tired of it you're sick and tired of dealing with it going through it whatever and um you know then you go and you read your word like for example this is what i was trying to find in, in galatians 5 starting in 19 through 21 it says uh now are the works of the flesh uh now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, uh, lavaciousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, uh, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, uh, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, um, revelings, and such of like. Uh, of the which I tell you before, as I've told you, uh, as I've also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And so when you read stuff like that, you're thinking, well, oh my God, like how many of those things could I check off the list? Like I've had a drinking problem. Um, you know, I've, I've committed an adultery and, you know, those things like that. And so you're like, does that keep me? Like am I cursed for life? And is it something that's sticking with me? But I don't think, but that's what Paul was dealing with with Galatians here, with the Galatians. He was just, you know, he apparently had told them more than once and they kept doing it. So he's like, as long as you're doing these things, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Well, there is a difference. And I think that this maybe isn't taught enough. And I wanted to address it before we go on. There's a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Um, the kingdom of God is his well-being, his plan, his will. In fact, uh, the Greek word is, uh, the from the, the Strong's Concordance is 932, and it's B-A-S-I-L-E-I-A. -E um, Basilia is how they pronounce that, and it actually means a royal power or dominion. That's what the kingdom, when the, when, whenever you read in the Bible, uh, the kingdom of God, that's what they're talking about. The kingdom of heaven is, or if you look at it, it's over in Matthew, 
what is it, 25 1, I believe it addresses in there where it says um, something about unlikened to the kingdom of heaven. And that text, that comes from the Greek word uh, 3773, and it's O Oh, yeah. O U R A N O S. And it is the place where God dwells and other heavenly beings dwell, a region above the, the starry heavens. So it, it's a place. Kingdom of heaven is, is, is the dominion and the power that we were supposed to inherit when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. The kingdom of heaven is a place. And so that's what Paul was getting into here, was, was saying, as long as you keep doing these things, you're never going to reap the blessings. But once we repent, like he told the Romans in 12, was it 12-2, I think it is, you know, there is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. As far as God's concerned, when you become born again and you you quit doing these things that he talked about in Galatians, you're good. Like you can obtain right. that. But it's just the matter of us understanding our dominion and our power. And as long as we don't, then we are basically telling Jesus that what he did on the cross wasn't enough. Yeah. And that's what our conversation was about this yeah. morning. <clears throat> I feel like so many times the enemy likes to keep us there. Like he likes to keep us in that living in our sins. Mm -hmm. It gives you that I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. Um, <clears throat> and so it just keeps you beaten down. It keeps you stagnant, so to speak. Absolutely. If, and I, uh, when you feel like everything that you're trying to do, nothing is working, it always comes back to, it was because I did this so many years ago, or yesterday I cussed, or yesterday I said something I shouldn't have said, or, you know, three weeks ago I told so-and-so off. I mean, that's how your brain starts to configure everything. And it's like, you're holding on to that, and basically you're just saying, my sin is bigger than the death and resurrection. Right. You know, he wasn't good enough to overcome my sin. And I had never looked at it that way. In fact, I mean, I've been in the game for quite a long time, probably since my introduction back in 2006, you know, and it's something I've always struggled with because I think you carry that guilt with you. You carry that, um, all different kinds of emotions you carry with you. You know what I mean? And, and so... By doing that, I think it, it negates, it blocks out a lot of the stuff that you have lined up for your future because it's like an anchor keeping you from progressing forward. You know, it, it's it's biting on to the, the bottom, um, which in a way is an example of, of our past. You know, what's underneath us, what's what's beneath us, hypothetically speaking now, you know, and, and so... That anchor, you know, keeps keeps that boat from taking off and moving forward. Or maybe it is moving, but it's still dragging along the bottom and it's slowing you down. And, and um, you know, it's important um, that we understand our authority. And if we don't, then the enemy can play any trick he wants to on us and it's going to work. It's going to be effective. And I think that's like a lot what I was dealing with, you know, is... is it affected me. It, yeah. it, it dealing with me. I mean, uh, in, in Ephesians 1, Paul wrote to me, he said, you know, verse 3, he says, be blessed, or blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Again, in Christ, talking about heaven, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Again, we come back to that, that kingdom of God, you know, and, and he's saying that we've already been chosen even before he built the world. We were already chosen by him, predestined to walk in that foundation of our inheritance, which he talks about in Romans 8, 17, that we're an adopted heir into this because of the work at the cross, because of that. And so, you know, by letting and allowing our past to weigh us down, whatever it may be, it's 
negating the cross. It's given the enemy power. We're not operating in our authority and in our power. And it's, you know, just throwing the whole balance of how we're supposed to be living and progressing off. And it's, I mean, if you really want to get hard, it's it's kind of a sin what, what we're doing by doing that because we're basically telling him he's not good enough, that what he did wasn't enough. Yeah. And like you were saying. Coming to him and asking him why isn't everything working? Why yeah. am I struggling? Why am I, why are we going through this? Why, why, why am I not hearing from you? You're basically shoving everything he did to you and saying it wasn't enough. My sin's bigger than you'll ever be. Exactly. You're placing more power over your sin or your mistake. Sometimes you can sin or just make a mistake. It's not a sin. Right. You know what I mean? It's just a mistake. And you're saying that that sin is bigger than he is. Instead of speaking to the mountain, telling him how big your God is, you're telling God how big your mountain is and that he's not able to overcome it. No, that's a good way to put it. I mean, most of the time, I don't think we mean to. I don't think we intend to. Um, for a lot of us, we're just trying to push through and strive and get by from the day to day. And, you know, that's been kind of my, I hate to say outlook, but it's the only word I know to, that compares. And sometimes even even ministers get caught up and, and we're not perfect. We're not, you know infallible um but i mean for for years I, i've done that and allowed that and when you excuse me when you brought that up this morning it was a huge eye-opener for me i was like i didn't really realize i was doing it um you only think you're affecting yourself you don't really think you're affecting those around you but in fact you are you know you're kind of um, putting that chain around their neck and and you know, now that we're talking about it, it, it kind of makes me understand what Jesus was talking about. I don't know where he put it in there, but um, it talks about, you know, get rid of your yoke. For, for your yoke and bondage is heavy, but but bear mine. Mine's light, you know, and, and he's telling us, like, quit looking at yourself as less than you are. Quit, you know, depending on your accomplishments to verify your success. And I think that's a lot of what we do is we base so much on either materialistic, like, you know, like, like monetarily uh, speaking or what we have possession wise dictates success. And I mean, you can have all the money in the world and, and all the expensive things in the world. It doesn't mean you came out honestly also doesn't mean you're successful. Exactly. I mean, maybe it just means that you're, you're a better scammer or a better schemer. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that people that are wealthy are like that, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, it doesn't, it doesn't have to, to mean that either. I mean, it could just simply be whatever the reason is, but it doesn't have to, you know, show how much you've, su you know, been successful. Um, we have to find success in in our our love and our affections towards others and and our accomplishments in the kingdom of heaven rather than in in this world you know yeah. i think is is very crucial and very important because at the grand scheme of things what we have here doesn't matter right it's what you're doing for the work of the kingdom um that's what we're placed here for and he never said it was going to be easy right and I think we get that mixed up with, we're walking for God. It's supposed to be an easy road. We're supposed to get everything we want, everything we desire, because that's what the Word says. Yeah. And we also forget that not everything we want and desire is good for us. True. You know, it's what we need or what what's in our best interest. You know no, I mean? and I mean, like, you that's a great analogy. I mean, you, you think about our, our son being a diabetic. He loves sweet stuff, but it's not good to give him that all the time. Can he have some in moderation? Yes. Um, but it's like he wants it more than what he is able to receive it. And so as parents, we're trying to, you know, guide that path correctly, but still allowing 
him to try to learn how to make better decisions. And I don't really see God as any other way with us, you know, in that same manner. And I think, too, we forget sometimes that, like, our sin didn't surprise him. No. He wasn't like, what? TJ did that? Jennifer did that? He's not surprised. Like, he's there, willing, ready, open arms to say, I got you. We'll get through it. Right. There's going to be consequences. I mean, there just are. There's consequences to every action you take, whether it be good or bad. And we'll get through it and we'll walk through it, but I've already overcame that. So now it's time to go out and fulfill your new mission, your your purpose, and reaching those people. Like, your testimony has reached more people that were ashamed to say anything, but we tend to focus on the ones that have made us feel bad or have put us down or made us feel like crap. You know what I mean? Like No, for sure. We tend to focus on the bad people instead of focusing on the people that this has truly helped. I mean, it's been beneficial and you know, it's brought people to the feet of Jesus to be like Right. You know, if he can do that for you, like, what can he do for me? You know, we we don't give him that credit in that aspect. We take it on, and these people that are mean about it or judge us about it or come in and, like, won't allow you the opportunity to work or, or whatever, taking away the things that you're desiring, those are the people that get the attention. Yeah, they and are. it takes the focus off of him and what all he's done because... If you go back and look at our testimony, there are so many times he showed up. Oh, yeah, all the time. I mean, there are so many little God winks in there, and I'm just like, when you're walking through that, I don't think you realize You it. don't realize any of it. You're just trying to, like, if you're on my side of the fence, you're just trying to keep your head above water. Mm -hmm. You're just trying not to drown. I can't speak for you on your side of the fence, but I'm, I'm sure it had a lot to do with just trying to hope it all works out for the best and that, you know, there's there's no separation for long periods of time and having to explain to the kids where that is and, and things like that, you know. So, I mean, you don't realize it. You're, you're just trying so hard to just hope it all works out. You know what I mean? And so now I feel like every time that comes up and, like, the answer's no because of that, it's like we get down or discouraged. Yeah, I do. It puts us back like two more steps, and we have to kind of yeah, that's for a little bit and then regroup and, and come back to where we were. I've been doing that for 15, 16 years. Because it's powerful when people say stuff. Right. I mean, people have said stuff to us that I don't think people would say to a normal person. It's been like a little bold little out there, but every time we've done that, I feel like we've just slapped him in the face. And every time the answer's been no because of that, it's been a blessing. <laughs> a big blessing. Like, yeah, I mean... It's been a huge, like, eye-opener, like, oh, we didn't need that at all. There's some, some difficulties in everything you just said, because I, I do agree with you. Also, I want to add, you know, there is some different circumstances for people, um, maybe in my circle. And, and I say that because you take uh, robbery. It has different classifications. Whether it's aggravated, you know, even assault. It is either assault, aggravated assault. You know what I mean? There, there's different stages. And, and like murder has different stages in the court systems, in the legal systems. It's, well, was it premeditated? Is it first degree? Is it second degree? Yeah. There's different levels. I get why people are the way they are concerning people in my circle. I, I mean, there are some bad cases, and a Absolutely. lot of it is, it's horrible. Absolutely. I mean, speaking as a human in the flesh, I would near say it's unforgivable. Okay, and, and I get that. Like you are, you are the lowest of low scum of scum. I get it. Yeah. I've also been through and around the system where there was some bad cases um, that should have never been in the system. 
being uh, one kid that I was in class with, him and this girl dated for three years. They were four years apart. They had been together continuously for four years. They had a big fight, broke it off, right? Um, at this time, he was quite a bit older than her. The parents decided to file statutory rape charges. He went to prison just because they got in a fight. And that was verified by the counselor. Like, that was really what happened. He was telling the truth. That's a bad case. But yet, he's he's broken for the rest of his life. Um, there's not enough classifications to separate other than high, medium, or low risk. That's it. Well, that doesn't really mean anything to the general public. Like, they, they go and they read, and they're like, you're in this big group, whether you belong there or not. And you're marked. You're marked. And, and so you don't try to let all of this overtake you. But it becomes to the point at, at a lot of times where you cannot help it. And so then you're kind of like me finding yourself in a place of uncertainty. You're kind of hanging in the middle. You're not on this side of the mountain, you're not on that. You're just kind of stuck in the middle, hanging in midair. You don't really know. And so you're just trying to navigate through all that and, and continue and to push and to strive. And so it, it's, it's so much harder, I think, because of the way things have painted that particular uh, situation, that it's impossible for some people to overcome. Yes. Um, Without God, I don't know that I ever could have made it this far. I had God, which, you know, of course, I had you. But it was you through God, because had we not had God in our life, I don't think we would have been able to be as strong as we've been to push on and push through and come out the way we've come out so far. And and I think that's important. I think it's imperative. You know, and so I don't mean to tell God that he's not enough. I don't mean to tell Jesus that he's not enough or that he hasn't done enough. It's just that that struggle of, of not fully being able to operate in your authority, in your power. And, and that's what, you know, Paul says right here in Romans 1.16. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, that good saving knowledge, that power. Um, it says, for it is the power of God Unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first and also the Greek. That is so relevant. Because if we don't understand our power, then we do get weighed down and we do get overcome. And it's just a repetitive cycle. That's what you were just talking about is where I've been for the past 15, 16 years. You get ahead of steam. All the air gets knocked out of you and you start right back over again. And you never complete anything because you're like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to run from, from here to there. Okay. So you get started and you get, you know, you get T-boned, you get knocked off the track and you're like, well, crap, I'm not doing that again. So I'm going to choose this path next. <laughs> and so you go here yeah. and then that happens and you're like, crap. So, and, and you never feel like you accomplish anything. You never feel like you can just be victorious. And so you either keep running down different tracks, getting knocked off. Or you get tired of being hit and you're just like, well, I'm going to go do something over here and I'm going to hide out a bit. Which I spent about six years doing, just hiding out, just trying to fly under the radar. Yeah. You know, And it wasn't until you were like, we need to stop this. Like, We need to completely get everything out there. We just need to get all this behind us and move forward. I honestly would not be where I am today um, had it not been for you. And that helped. And... It's imperative that people have that kind of assistance in their life. And to be able to have somebody pushing them in their corner that sees them how they really are, not how they're they're labeled, so to speak. That feeling of unworthiness is so hard to watch. And we all struggle with it. Yeah. But it's so hard to watch when, like, you're going through it. And I'm like, What? That was 20 years ago or you know that was three years ago or whatever and you are worthy you are capable
capable of so much and there's so much in you and I want to see the best in you when I've seen the worst in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> True story. And so I'm like, that's not you. Why are we continuing to go through this vicious cycle? And like, now I'm understanding like why the Egyptians stayed in the desert for... Oh, the Israelites. Yeah. I say the Egyptians. Well, I know what you meant because they, they were rescued from <laughs> Egypt. But, yeah, I get it. Like, that's a great analogy. I mean, yeah, they're sitting here telling him he's not good enough. The birds, the manna, it's not good enough. And uh, you're just expecting him to continue to pour when you're legit slapping him in the face by saying, my sin's bigger than, than your blood. I sit here being that you say that, and the first place I go is like, how stupid were they? I mean, <laughs> he he parted the Red Sea. They crossed on dry ground. And when the Egyptian army got in the middle, he closed the waters and, and flooded them out. And they still moaned and whined. And I'm like, how in the world could they do that? That's way judgmental of me. And I get humbled by the Holy Spirit. And he's like, <laughs> You haven't done any better. You, yeah. you haven't done any better. He's yeah. worked just as big of miracles for you in your life, and you're still telling him he's not good enough. You're yeah. still telling him he's not big enough, you know? It's an eye-opener. I mean, it, it's being humbled. It's it's truly being humbled and getting brought back down to earth and being like, don't judge. Yeah. You know, don't judge. And I think, like, we've been told no a few times. Yeah. Um, different things and just here recently and at the time it's like a blow and it hurts because like, your heart's oh, set on it okay well that was fun <laughs> so you become stagnant again because the answer was no and instead of taking that as that was a blessing that was not at all where we were supposed to be it's not at all what we were supposed to be doing right. that would have been a detrimental track for many reasons like our marriage, <laughs> our family, you know, anything. Who and, knows where we'd be now? You know. Had those been a yes. And you're like, oh my gosh, you're being a big baby. No. Like, you're being a baby because you got told no. And that's, I don't know. I've been working on that a lot because not every no is a bad thing. Right. <laughs> All of our no's have turned into really good yes. <laughs> on that particular one that you're talking about, I mean, how detrimental would that have been right now um, with the way everything worked out? I mean, we would be completely stuck in a horrible place, unable to get out of it. Yeah. Because of the certain economic pitfalls, I guess you would say. I mean, we would be stuck and we would be extremely, oh, I mean, I, I know we would lose money on the deal because we would have had to sold out at a way cheaper price just to get rid of it because you wouldn't have been able to keep up the, the feed and all that for it. And we hadn't had the rain to sustain the land. So, I mean, that would be another huge uh, blow, be, you know, impact. I mean, it would be it would be tough. I mean, but we really had our hearts set on it. It was really something we thought we wanted to do. And it really wasn't for our best interest. I mean, certain things like we were talking about with, with him. It's just not in the best interest. And if you'll just wait a little bit, if it's still there, if that desire is still there, kind of like you do with your clothes and your shoes. I mean, <laughs> she has this rule where, like, if she sees something she wants, she waits six weeks. And this is on pretty much everything. Doesn't matter what it is. Unless it's on major sale right then and there. And I'm talking, like, $5 <laughs> for a t-shirt major sale. Like, she's that, that way. But if you still want it in six weeks and you have it, then you get it. And that's the way you do and have always been. And so that being said, I mean, it's kind of that way with everything. If you, if you still want it and you've prayed for like six weeks on it and everything works out, then, then it's a go. But, you know, too many times I think we get impulsive and, and we get 
eager to gain ground. And, and I think we jump into stuff that may not always be the best. Yeah. Everything I've done impulsively has always turned out better. Right, right. But also, I think he gives us these ideas and he gives us these dreams. He gives us these visions. And I think my personality is like, okay, he's telling me to do this now. Right. And that's not the case. Like, Jennifer doesn't want to wait three months. But his timing is three months from now. And so I'm like, okay, we got to get this done. Well, the answer is no, 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 no. And I'm like, God, you told me to do this. Why is everything a no? Like, why, why are these doors not opening? And it's legit because it's just not time. Or I don't have the full vision. You know, I get ahead of myself in that aspect a lot. Instead of just sitting down, writing it down helps me a lot. And just seeking it out and just praying consistently. And then allowing him to open those doors instead of me barging through them. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were talking about this morning too, you know, is, is sometimes those visions are, you know, Habakkuk 2 too says, you know, write things down. In fact... Let me see if I can, it's right before the New Testament starts. Oh, my fingers are not working today. Habakkuk 2, uh, 2. It says, oh, we'll just start in 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write uh, turn the page. The vision, and make it plain upon tablets that when he, uh, that he may run and read it. For the vision, verse three, is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come and it will not tarry. So I mean, it may not be for right now. Write that vision down. Like you call it brain dumping is what she said. I'm going to go brain dump. And, she'll, and, and so <clears throat> the vision may not always be for now. But like, don't worry, it's coming. But if we don't prepare our fields, if we don't, you know, get things ready, then you can't plant and you can't water it and you can't expect a harvest. It, there's, there's an order. And we get out of order because we... We get in a hurry, and I think we do that because what happens a lot in my time and in, in my life is I get discouraged, and a lot of that happens because of you know things that have happened in the past. And so when that happens, then I get distracted and I get discouraged. Like we said, we tell him basically, you know, the cross isn't good enough. I'm going to do something else. Yeah. This isn't yeah. working for me. Yeah. You're not fulfilling things on my time frame. So I'm going to do something else. And so you run a rabbit for six years, and then that basically reaches a dead end. You get tired, you exhaust out, and you're like, oh, crap, now what? Okay, God, I'm ready to listen. And so you start the process all over again. And that's what happens by telling him that his work wasn't enough. And again, more times than we've read in here, it, it boils down to understanding and operating in our authority. When we fully have a grasp of our authority, I don't think we're going to get led astray by the enemy as much. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not still going to happen. Even Jesus himself was tempted in the wilderness. The devil took him out in three different times he tried. Yeah. You know, it's going to happen. Temptation's going to come. But A, we need to do like James says and count it all joy when we fall into those different temptations and struggles because that means that we're doing something right we're on the right path or we wouldn't be getting tempted if we weren't walking things out for god we wouldn't be getting distracted and then you know secondly we must always do what paul told them in second corinthians 10 compare everything to the knowledge of god every thought every idea every temptation can, that has to line up with the word of god if it doesn't then it's not of god and then we've got to understand um, our, our authority, our power, and our inheritance. The way he talked it, yeah, he, he preached it to Rome, he preached it to Galatia, he preached it to Ephesus, and to Corinth. He was all in those areas right there during that time frame, um, which is a lot of ground to cover, I mean, if you think about it. But, you know, because he was in Greece, he was in Italy, 
you know, yeah. all over in there. I mean, that's if you look at the map, it, there's quite a bit of land when you're walking. And so he was trying to tell them, you know, um, you got to understand your authority. You have to understand your inheritance. You have to start operating in the in the fact of you were called, predestined, as he just said. You you were predestined before he even designed this earth to walk in the authority that Jesus was going to hang on that cross and give us. And we have to understand that. That will help keep us from living in the past, walking in our past, and letting our past overpower our future. Yeah. I mean. Write those visions down. Make them plain. Make them plain. Start praying over them. Start speaking life into them. Start working towards them. Like, you can want a house and build a house, and you can go buy the lumber, and you can sit there, and you can watch it, and it's not going to build. You have to put in that work. Mm -hmm. You have to work towards your goals, and you have to work towards your visions. God didn't tell you those visions just to lay them all out for you. You still have to work for them. You still have to go for them and achieve right. them. And writing those down and staying on track helps me to stay on track. This is what I'm fighting for. This is what I'm getting up for. This is what I'm working towards. And, okay, I want it to happen next week. But the reality of that happening next week is very small. Right. So, you know, and when things start going awry, you have something to look back to and be like, no, this is what my vision is. This is where I'm at. Even if you have to shift it sometimes. I'm not saying everything that you write down is set in stone, bold phase, this is what we're doing. Sometimes there is a deviation in it. But stay focused on that. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, like he's going to, and tries to tear you off path, you have something you're sticking to. You have right. something you're, and you're in tune with the Father about it. That's another thing. Staying in tune with him. Because... That no that you're so upset about is his biggest yes. Right. You know, I mean, that's that no is a big blessing. And instead of getting discouraged and taking time away because you didn't get what you wanted, really we're selfish is really what we are. No, we do. And I think we've all fallen into that. I mean, it's our flesh. Oh. It, it's, it's our flesh. It's our... You know, and he, Paul talked about it all through these these four, you know, major churches in here. I mean, it's the flesh that we do. He talks about the flesh so much in these chapters. Um, it, it's nothing more than, than our flesh, you know, having dominion over us instead of us being over our, you know, having the dominion over our, our body. Um, in fact, I was doing some other studies this morning, and I, I wrote this down, and it's kind of, if I can get to it right quick, it's kind of interesting, um, but, um, yeah, 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20, and, and basically what he's talking about is, is honoring God by honoring our, our body, which is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and that's what he's talking about. And, and it's talking about that, but doing these bad things to ourselves with the drinking and the drugs and, and all that. But it relates to this just the same because, you know, our body is a temple. It is the church for the Holy Spirit. And by us not operating in the fullness, by us not operating in our authority and our inheritance and all those things, we're basically corrupting the temple the way I feel about it. And, and we're not allowing it to be the holy place that it's supposed to be. We're making it into a den of thieves, so to speak, in, in my way of looking at it. Because anytime you go in and corrupt something that is pure, it makes it less than what it was intended to be. You know, a bad apple in, in, a, in a barrel can ruin the whole barrel of apples. It can stink it up. It can spread its rottenness on. Monty used to say you can't soar with eagles and hang around with vultures. So, I mean, anytime you do that, you're making that any it, you're making it less than what it was intended to be, which was to be pure. And we don't mean to. We don't do it on purpose. But we get to dwelling in those hardships and those times, and it's making... 
what God's trying to create perverse and corrupt and unclean. Right. And so it was very, it impacted me in, in a mighty way about us getting into this today. I mean, it really ministered to me probably more than it did our, our followers because I haven't meant to do any of these things. I haven't meant to go down these tracks. I haven't done any of this on purpose. Just trying to keep pushing on and keep pressing on. But I realize now, and so I'm, you know, working hard at correcting that and, and pushing through those those times. So anyway. Well, I mean, I think it was an awesome lesson. I got a lot out of it. I mean, it, it really preached to me. So, uh, I guess we'll be back on track on Thursday, somewhere around in there. Yeah. I know we've got a lot of stuff that we're working towards, a lot of stuff that we're pushing to. Some new stuff's coming in, maybe some older stuff may have to get put on the back burner. We're, we're just trying to, yeah. to figure some things out here to be the best for, for you guys. And I think we're just trying to sort through some stuff. And, um, anyway, we got a lot going on, so we're trying to get it all in and, and figure out everything. Um, we got our blogs on the website, so go check those out. Um, those will be... They'll be posting this week. I think mine will it hit tomorrow. Yours will hit Wednesday or Thursday. So uh, check those out. If you need anything, holler at us, as always. always. Uh, QuintTMinistries at gmail.com. Um, website... QuintTMinistries.wixsite.com. I finally <laughs> memorized it. Wix is W I X S I T E.com. That's why that's put yeah. out there. So you can check out things on there. Um, yep. I guess that's it. If you need us, holler at us. And as always, we love you guys and we appreciate all your support. Absolutely. So we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.